Next up, I'd like to welcome Ben Yi. Ben is from the ANU College of Engineering and Computer Science, and the title of Ben's presentation tonight is Controlling and Shaping Social Power in Groups. Between April and June of this year, many of you in the audience, like me, rushed home from work every single Monday to watch the latest episode of The Game of Thrones. And apart from the gratuitous amounts of sex and violence, what really captivated me was that in a fantasy show, we could see real-world behavior. People outwitted and outmaneuvered each other to gain social power. And my PhD investigates this behavior. I'm studying how individual social power within a group of people can be shaped and controlled. You can think of individual social power as the amount of influence someone has in a group discussion. In the example behind me, King Joffrey, the handsome man in the middle, has by far the most social power. If he claims in a discussion that he's the greatest king in the history of Westeros, unless you want to be shot with a crossbow, you'd have to agree. Using the existing de Groot Friedkin mathematical model, it's possible for us to calculate each person's social power in a group. It depends on factors such as who talks to who and the strength of that interpersonal relationship. For a group shaped like a star, all of the individual social power collects at the center with our king. In other words, we have an autocracy. So, motivated by the Game of Thrones, I then asked, how could we break that autocracy? Well, it turns out you don't challenge the king unless you want to be shot with a crossbow. Instead, you begin by influencing one of his subjects, which I've shown with a green arrow. What I discovered is truly remarkable was that as the strength of that influence increased and increased and increased, the king's social power decreased and decreased and decreased until at a critical point, he was no longer socially dominant. But which of the four subjects surrounding the king would you pick to influence? How much influence is required exactly for the king to lose social dominance? We all intuitively guess at these questions, but my research uses mathematical analysis to give us the answers. And because we as humans naturally form communities and groups, the research will apply not only to an autocracy, but an army general might ask, how could I structure my soldiers so that I exert the most amount of control over them, but at the same time, I don't have to issue commands to every single one of them, like in a star group. Should it be 10 groups of 10 soldiers or two groups of 50 soldiers? Understanding how to shape and control individual social power within groups allows the general to answer that question and many more just like it. So keep an eye out for my thesis and you too could win the Game of Thrones. <laughs> 